Live from the Script Studios, this is San Diego's news source, 10 News. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Escondido where a luxury car plowed into an apartment complex with a family sitting just feet away. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. That situation took a dramatic turn when the driver of that car got out and tried to run. It happened in the 500 block of North Dade Street. Tenders reporter Dan Haggerty joins us live from the scene with what happened to the driver when witnesses caught up to him. Dan. Yeah, witnesses say the people, neighbors living near here attacked that driver. Police pulled out of here just a few minutes ago. This is the apartment complex behind me. You can see the boards up right now. It may look like a quiet scene right now, but when you take a look at this video, you'll see just how hectic it was. And then all of a sudden we felt like it was an earthquake. Eight-year-old Karina was at home doing schoolwork when this car crashed through the wall of their first floor apartment complex, nearly hitting her sister. Where it happened where the curtains were, and she was sitting right there. The driver apparently didn't stick around to find out if he hurt anyone, opening the driver's side door and taking off. He went running, and then, uh, they, and then this guy caught him, and then he took him to the police and took him in the police car. But first, police say he's going to the hospital. They say he suffered a head injury, not from the crash, but when a man who lived here detained him for police. And police say it's just too soon to know exactly what caused this crash. They're checking to see if drugs or alcohol played a role, checking to see if the vehicle was stolen. Witnesses say that multiple people were inside, not just the driver, three or more. They all scattered at the time, and they say they were young, almost high school age. We're checking with police to see how many were detained and the condition on the driver who went to the hospital. Reporting live tonight in Escondido, Dan Haggerty, 10 News. A lot's happening. Thank you, Dan. We're also on top of another breaking story out of the L.A. area where five firefighters have been injured battling this enormous fire. This is at a commercial building there. This is happening in an area called Echo Park, and we've learned part of that building has collapsed. More than 100 firefighters are on scene right now. Of course, we will stay on top of this story throughout this newscast and bring you any new developments as we get them. The San Onofre nuclear power plant will not be able to start producing electricity until 2013 at the earliest. That was the decision tonight from the U.S. Regulatory Commission. 10 News reporter Chris Murphy was there for the reason behind tonight's decision in Dana Point. A who's who of the nuclear industry all gathered here at the St. Regis Hotel in Dana Point. Inside, an overflow crowd as they debated what to do with the San Onofre nuclear plant. We must demand independent experts and sworn testimony. Those independent experts, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, called this meeting to hear both sides of this growing controversy. If somebody chooses to use this form of energy to generate electricity, our job is to make sure it's safe. Safety was the biggest concern for the majority of people who packed into the ballroom of the St. Regis Hotel in Dana Point. They say starting the nuclear power plant back up is nothing short of dangerous. In January, it was shut down when a leak in one of the reactors was discovered. Inspectors found that steam pressure tubes were wearing out faster than expected. Now, Southern California Edison, which runs the plant, wants to start one of the reactors back up at 70% of capacity. Edison tells us that they've had 1,700 inspections and they have worldwide experts. The NRC tells us they've got an augmented inspection team. Where were all of those people before they approved these steam generators the first time around? This time around, if Reactor 2 is to reopen, the NRC must give the okay with the public's input first. We are not in the business of myth or speculation. We are in the business of safety and ultimately providing safe, clean, and reliable electricity. In Dana Point, Chris Murphy, 10 News. A warning tonight from the Better Business Bureau about a cell phone buyback company that says it will pay you for your old mobile phone. Tonight, 10 News reporter Itika Milanis uncovered the company with more than 200 complaints against it. The cell phone buyback company has 50,000 customers around the U.S., but it's headquartered right here in San Diego. The Better Business Bureau says cellular distribution strategies, also known as Hello Totem on the Internet, had 224 complaints in the last 12 months. Well, this is an extraordinary volume out of one company. It clearly communicates to me there's something seriously wrong at the company. 
We went to the Mira Mesa office to talk to the owner. He wasn't there, and when we asked for his phone number, well, where are we? Don't, don't touch, touch my don't camera. Get out of my phone. office. Get don't. out of my office. We eventually caught up with the owner, Nick Fiorentino. It disappoints me. I mean, I've. I've put my life into this, and uh, I know that the service that we offer for consumers is a good one. But hundreds of consumers are angry. The complaints range from excessive payment delays, receiving less money than the quoted amount for phones, and difficulty reaching the business. But I can say it's reached a, a critical mass that has caused us to give them an F rating. It's extremely bad customer service. Um, they're just a very frustrating and time-consuming experience. Bob Olson waited two months for his money before finally going to the business in person. But Fiorentino says customers are partly to blame. We also are seeing a huge influx of customer phones that aren't what they stated that they were. Other factors he says are out of his control are slower FedEx shipping times and a sudden surge of phones since the release of the iPhone 5. Nonetheless, he says he's trying to resolve the problems. Itika Milanis, 10 News. A four-year-old girl is recovering in the hospital tonight following a horrifying attack by a pit bull in National City. Witnesses tell 10 News that four-year-old Haley asked if she could pet the pit bull, and that's when the dog lunged at her. Vanessa Gonzalez says what happened next was terrifying. The dog had her by the neck. Um, he was tossing her around. He did let go and went towards her face. And what I seen with her face was his whole mouth was on her whole face. Haley is now in stable condition. The dog's owner, 22-year-old Brittany Gardner, is facing several charges. The dog has been euthanized, and neighbors say apartment complex rules forbid having pit bulls. New tonight, a Danish man is claiming to be a double agent who infiltrated Al-Qaeda to help bring down one of the world's top terrorists. This is the man who calls himself Morten Storm. He told a Danish newspaper that he worked for that country's intelligence service known as PET. He says he later worked so closely with the CIA that President Obama knew his name. Storm says he was the one who helped to track and kill former San Diegan Anwar Awalaki by giving him a USB drive which contained a tracking device. Turning now to the race for president where the makers behind Sesame Street are asking President Obama's campaign to pull its latest ad featuring Big Bird. Bernie Madoff, Ken Lay, Dennis Kozlowski, criminals, gluttons of greed, and the evil genius who towered over them one man has the guts to speak his name. Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. Well, the people behind Sesame Street say they do not endorse presidential candidates. The Obama campaign says it will take the request to pull the ad under review. There is a little bit of good news tonight when it comes to gas prices around San Diego. We just checked in the average price per gallon today in the county is $4.70. That's down one penny from yesterday's average, but it's worth looking around. We found at least two stations selling gas for $4.35 a gallon. To find the cheapest gas in your area, go to 10news.com and click on traffic and look for gas prices. Tonight we are getting our first look inside the prison that will soon be Jerry Sandusky's home until Pennsylvania prison officials decide where to send him long term. These are pictures from inside the Camp Hill prison. Sandusky will be held alone in a cell for the next month. Then he will be transferred to another prison where he won't be eligible for parole until he's 98. An emotional day in court today as a man convicted of killing his soon to be ex wife learned his sentence. 43 year old Mel Maribante sat and listened as his former mother in law told him my heart, uh, quote, my heart is broken forever. I will never recover from losing her, and it sickens me to call you family. Maribante apologized and then was sentenced to 80 years in prison. We just checked, and the current death toll from a nationwide outbreak of meningitis remains at 11 tonight. 119 people are now sick from the virus linked to a steroid pain injection. It is believed as many as 13,000 people may have received the injection from a tainted batch of medication. The outbreak affects nine states, including California, and there are still no reported cases in San Diego County. We have learned tonight that a 40 year old note found in an old film canister in the Sierras was written by a San Diegan when he was just a boy. 69 year old Larry Wright found the note on a remote peak high in the Sierra. Now when he opened the canister, he found the writings from a then 13 year old San Diegan. He began looking for him 
and he found him right here. San Diego Superior Court Judge Tim Taylor. Taylor's father saw his son's story in the newspaper. Tim, you're not going to believe this. You're in the paper for a note you left 40 years ago on some mountaintop up in the Sierra. Mm -hmm. Taylor says he still remembers the day he left that note while on a Boy Scout backpacking trip, August 17th, 1972. Still remembers the day. I'm still waiting for that mes message in a bottle that I threw out in the ocean years and years <laughs> ago. Hasn't come back. Oh, uh, yeah, it pays to be a Boy Scout. Yeah. You know, so many lessons learned there. There's still more news to come. New tonight, this man is lucky to be alive, stepping out of his car moments before it blew up. But there's someone inside, how he frantically pulled her to safety. Plus, a local father angry over what he says his daughter was allowed to buy for her school lunch. Then how this cat became an unlikely hero for a small dog. You'll really notice a change in our weather tomorrow. A thick marine layer may ring out some patchy drizzle early on, but mostly cloudy at the coast all day. Inland partial sun by lunchtime with temperatures topping out at 73. Coming up, when and where the approaching storm will have the biggest impact. Then on Nightline, the latest on the search for that 10 year old Colorado girl who vanished on her way to school. Well, new tonight, a quick stop at the gas station turned into a desperate attempt to save a woman's life after the car in which she was sitting caught fire. You can see the car suddenly ignite. Look to the far right of your screen, almost out of view, where a man ran around to the passenger side door and pulls his wife from the car. She survived but is being treated for severe burns. Wow. The FBI is looking into whether the kidnapping of 10 year old Jessica Ridgeway in Colorado is related to another kidnapping in Wyoming on Monday. That 11 year old in Wyoming was eventually freed after being held by an armed man in a white van. Today, this new video of Jessica was released showing her playing with the family dog. It's been four days since she disappeared. The state's crime lab is now processing Jessica's backpack for DNA evidence, which was found Sunday, about six miles from where she was last seen. Two teenage boys accused of raping two Rancho Penasquitos girls face their accusers in court today. Lionel Contreras and William Rodriguez have pleaded not guilty to the attack, but one of the 16-year-old girls identified the pair and gave a chilling account of what happened that night in February of last year. Since the girl is underage, we are not showing you that part of the testimony, but Deputy DA Wendy Patrick didn't hold back. Because there was a knife to her throat. She'll tell you she was terrified. She did everything that those two young men ordered her and her friend to do. Contreras' attorney said DNA evidence will show his client is innocent. New tonight, incredible video of a motorcyclist hitting a car at roughly 90 miles an hour. The video is graphic, but amazingly, the motorcyclist survived. Take a look. Watch the white car as it drives into the intersection and is broadsided by that motorcycle. The motorcycle demolishes the hood of the car. You see the rider just went flying into the air. Amazingly, he walked away from that accident, actually walked away. Wow. And we have received a flood of response on our 10 News Facebook page about a local father who believes the Poway School District should monitor the junk food his daughter buys. Cinnamon rolls, um, Doritos, um, Cheetos, ice cream sandwich for like one dollar. Those are just some of the things that 11 year old Katie Briscoe likes to eat. Her, her dad, though, he's upset after receiving a $120 bill for all that junk food. School officials told our consumer reporter Kristen Severance they discuss what food is available during uh, back to school night, but some parents say the information just isn't clear enough. Classes will resume Thursday at Helix Charter School after a water main break sent the students home in the middle of finals. So maybe that extra studying you should have done the day before now you have a, a second day to do it? Yes. The pipe has been repaired, but there will be no class again tomorrow because of a scheduled teacher development day. Police are on the lookout for a couple of pranksters who stole a goat from a petting zoo and then gave it a pedicure. This video shows a woman hopping the fence at the PB pumpkin patch in Pacific Beach. You can see her scoop up the goat, unlock the fence and then take off. Workers there are happy to have their goat back, but they also have a message to share. They go to the bathroom a lot, and I can only imagine what their house looks like, so it's kind of karma for them. 
Although the owner doesn't want to press charges, police would still like to ask them a few questions. Well, new tonight, we have an unusual rescue to show you. It is a cat saving a dog. The cat appeared to be clawing at a hole in the wall, but you can see now that a dog was trapped on the other side. The cat tried to pull the dog out with its paws, but he couldn't. The cat finally climbed under and push, push, push. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. He's pushing from the backside and he got the dog out. Trust me. Now, Pinpoint Weather, brought to you by the White Glove Guys at ASI Hastings <laughs> Heating, Air, and Solar. <laughs> I love that caveat. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> the dog's the free. Dog's fine. The cat's Everybody's fine. Good. They're friends. That was great. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. Well, guys, we have a big storm on the way. I don't think I've ever seen one so uh, obviously uh, showing up here on our water vapor loop, and it's coming right for San Diego. Take a take a look at that. The center of the storm right now is about 200 miles west of Monterey. It is sliding slowly southward and uh, bringing a lot of cold air with. It. It's not particularly bringing a lot of moisture with it, but when a storm is on the way, 10 News can utilize the power of rain futurecast to pinpoint exactly when and where that weather will impact us. So here it is at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning for your morning commute, and it looks like the marine layer is thickened up enough that we might get a little bit of drizzle from, I'd say, oh, about uh, La Jolla south down to a Pacific Beach, maybe Coronado. But then during the day tomorrow, you can see just uh, a lot of overcast sky, no real rain again until 10 News Rain Futurecast says 2 o'clock in the morning. Now this is tomorrow night into Thursday morning. That's when it looks like most of the rain is going to come our way while you're sleeping right here along the coastal strip. So let's let it run a little bit longer to the morning commute on Thursday at 7 a.m. And it looks definitely like rain is going to be dampening our roadways, maybe the I-5, the 805, uh, the 15 perhaps, but mostly along the coastal strip. So how much rain do we think we're going to get with this system? Not a lot. As I said, there's cold air coming down, but there's not a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So we might squeeze out two tenths of an inch up there in Oceanside, a little bit over one tenth of an inch from Carlsbad down to San Diego and even Chula Vista. So uh, this is what I'm forecasting for tomorrow as those temperatures continue to decrease. We'll be below average, but still we'll be in the 70s there along the coast with that chance of early morning drizzle. But some places only in the upper 60s, as you can see. So for the next seven days. Uh, we've got three days of very unsettled weather, very cold weather for San Diego this time of year. But then look at the weekend just in time mm -hmm. for the Miramar Air Show. We're going to be sunny and uh, we're going to dry out uh, and it's going to be up to 83 by Sunday. So something for everybody here. It is mm -hmm. great timing. All right, thank you, Pat. All right, up next, the San Diego Zoo's newest giant panda cup. Got another checkup today. The big milestone is about to hit. Then a life-changing announcement from former Helix High football star Reggie Bush.